We have another Mandalore reaction for you, wonderful people. Let's see what's going to happen here. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm gonna turn it down a little for us. Because I can't hear Fable sometimes when we're doing this. When the video is too loud. Back when I played Overlord, I thought the minions were fun, but I wished I had more control over them. That's when a lot of people started emailing me about Sacrifice. Was I had not heard much mind. about it and- Never mind. Flatty is playing I'm what? I'm disappointed. I'm what? disappointed. Why are you disappointed? I thought it was an Overlord video. I'm legitimately disappointed now. Why? We're, what's, we watched an Overlord video when you weren't here. I'm even more disappointed. I can't hear you, Rain. They're both very loud in my ears. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> We're just in the background. Don't worry. Oh. Okay, well, um... Shut up. What? Yeah? Someone asked me which win I am, so I was like, fine, I'll make it easier for you. I'm racist nuts. <laughs> oh my god. Got him. I said Got I was him. Rain. I was like, okay, fine, make it different then. <laughs> Okay. okay, so, well, wait, you like Overlord Fable? Yeah, the really silly minion one, yeah. Yeah, I wish there were more games kind of like it where you're a dark overlord tech. Actually, you know what, that's the game idea I kind of had, where you start out as a little monster and then you can ascend to being an overlord. Yeah, Overlord is really fun. The first one is interesting because it was different, and 2 does improve on some stuff, but it also kind of... Uh, doesn't really do as well as the first one. Which, which and anime or no, the no, game. It's game. it's a game, Rain. It's a game. Uh, Overlord. We never got three. We did get another ver. We did get another one in the timeline, but a lot of fans don't really consider it because of how stupid it is. It's just a, like a top-down multiplayer game. Yeah, it's not yeah. good. Oh, how? Hello, Especially since freaking room. Overlord 2 it ends on a ends on a cliffhanger and we're like, wait, can't do this to us. No. Yeah. Hello, uh Heal Venom. Yeah, we're talking about Overlord just a bit. We we have a reaction over on YouTube of Fable wasn't there and now he is upset about it. Yeah, I'm gonna be playing it soon. I, I really wanna play it again because it's literally one of the games from my childhood. I never got to play it as a kid, though I wish I did. Hello no. Yes, it's been a bit. A few days, but yeah. Uh, I kind of play, we'll just shove the helmet on Fable and see what happens. He'll look like K you know what? I'm gonna play it Monday now. I'm gonna play it Monday now, just just cause I want to play it now. Okay. For today, I'll, I'll play leave. It. I'm leaving yeah, now. It. I'll go play it right now. I'll see you guys. Tomorrow. No, don't I go do. play it right now. All I said was okay. Max said okay. I am free. Dobby I'm... is free. No, because <laughs> I chained you to the wall with these iron chains. Takes the wall as I leave. You can't take the Master wall. Off, you're sent to top you with clothes. What the hell is happening Sorry. to my reaction? Yeah. Where he plays a spellcasting wizard, but it's oh. also an RTS. You say you also claim night today. Shit. You said on the weekend. Oh my god. Just let's get past this one video and then you guys can do a thing, I guess. Uh, I, okay. We can stop for Chrono Trigger, not this week, mostly because I'm feeling a little bit under the weather just all of a sudden. Uh, get some okay. rest, dude. Version is that it's a third person. It's it. Get some rest. Okay. Don't force yourself. Yeah, don't don't force yourself. Don't be like me. Don't do stream 20 hours a day, okay? I mean, I wish I could do nothing but stream, but I have work in the morning, so anyway, moving forward. Let's just react to this last one, and then we'll get off. I know it's a short video, but I don't know. I guess maybe I'm just not eating enough. The only thing I had, like I said, was that plate of mac and cheese and watermelon. ...game where you play as a spellcasting yeah, wizard, but it's also an RTS game. With oh. all the in-depth formations and controls you'd expect. I think this looks like a game people would like to play. The campaign has a bizarrely high-profile cast, and uh, Tim Curry plays a god. He needs more monsters. Well, there's a god. It's played by Tim Curry. Four souls. Yeah. That should do nicely. 
All right, but it has plenty of monsters. Do. The good news is that trying the GOG copy. Tim it Curry betrayed me, but once. it's locked in four by three. Talk about it. How did Tim Curry betray you? I don't like to talk about it. Oh my god. And locked at 30 <laughs> FPS. Not to mention the resolution is pretty low. Oh. Well, by using the ever reliable DG Voodoo wrapper, the frame rate and resolution unlock, and it runs great. Except I can't record it now. Oh. Some old games are like a deep sea fish. Sure, you can go and visit the fish in its habitat, but try to bring it up to the surface, and sometimes it explodes. So yeah. I did some tweaking I barely remember to record it properly, but you don't need to do all that. This is good, but now the icons are stretched out. Luckily, okay. Sacrifice has an easy to install widescreen fix. Cool. Normally, this should be the end of it, but there's one more crucial step. DG Voodoo is... unlocked the frame rate completely, but now you need to cap it back to 60. If you dare to run the game above that, the enemy AI breaks down. Oh. You'll just sit there and not do anything. Now you're done, but there is one more catch. For reasons that I don't and cannot fully understand, sometimes when you relaunch the game, it resets your textures then to low. Oh. In an older game where you manage a lot of units, it can be easy to miss this. I ended up having to re-record a lot of stuff to avoid the issue, so if things suddenly look blurrier for no reason, that's what's happening. The uh. same thing seems to have hit other people trying to upload footage of the game too, so I feel less crazy. The main okay. menu stayed at a super low resolution too, so it is hard to tell when you relaunch it. So now we can see whether or not it was worth jumping through all these hoops. That's a lot of weird monsters, Fable. <laughs> Begun. We're too late again, Master. All dead. Oh. It has begun. I begin to think the cause of this destruction cannot be other than myself. Master. My dark experiments come to a most wicked end. The intro reminds me a lot of Legacy of Cain. The atmosphere is dark and moody, and it looks like you might be playing the villain. I, I might play the Legacy of Cain remakes if you guys want that. Or remasters. Because I'm willing to give those games a shot. Well, yeah, mostly indie games for this week. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. I just feel out of it today. I love... We'll keep going. Cut this down for time, but there are shots of just fields and fields of corpses. Oh. And my cane meter keeps getting higher. <laughs> it seems you are to be my salvation after all. That voice acting, though, that's amazing. I am no one's salvation. I am a pawn of doom itself. Is that... That's... That's the grandfather from Ben 10. Yeah, that is. He's also the colonel in Metal Gear. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. What? You speak in riddles, sir? Uh, I wonder if even my wisdom can decipher them. It can't. So you go oh. out to visit the gods. Playing as the Wandering Wizard Eldred, your services are very in demand. Eldred, the Wandering Wizard, From huh? here, the story can start diverging, so I'll save all that for later. Let's okay. get into the game. What the hell? Graphically, for a game from 2000, this is really impressive. It's not the best visuals of the time or anything, but more of the scale they're operating on. These can be mm. big maps, and each faction can bring dozens of units to a fight. Cool. Then you combine that with all the magic effects and the terrain battle scarring like blood and craters, and it's kind of amazing this worked at all. The maps are simple, yeah. but the art style and the surreal nature of all of it really do go a long way. Some will have these swirling California brush fire skies that are gorgeous oh. to look at in their own weird way. Usually the atmosphere is oppressive, which is appropriate. I once saw those kind of fires for real. Not like for real for real, but it looked like the apocalypse was happening when there was a giant wildfire. It was something else for me. It's place in a world that was shattered into floating islands. The balance of magic, or whatever the hell, has already shit the bed hard. This uh. world is apocalyptic and you're constantly reminded of it. You could say the train is still too simple and lacks detail, and I would agree. Except this land is all made to be broken. Ah. Uh. Oh! <laughs> This isn't the kind of magic where you have a sparkle gun that'll get through airport security. Oh. Casting a spell in Sacrifice usually ends with a National Remembrance Day and a federal holiday. Oh. Oh. So casting magic is just, I'm going to cast a lightning storm. It's, I'm going to cast lightning and it's going to zap the very floor upon the sky. I don't know if that made sense. My. Yeah. Hey, remember when that wizard came and casted a fucking volcano? Oh, remember yeah. Remember the screaming souls? Oh! Oh, God. Oh. This isn't like Harry Potter magic. This is... I... I don't even know how to describe it. You're committing magic or something? Eldritch like Horror. You're casting yeah. magic. You're committing magic. Yeah, exactly. You're committing, committing magic. Committing magic. 
Like using magic. magic. Basically, it's like you're bending the fabric of reality to your whims, but you don't know how to do it so right, so you might accidentally cast a volcano. And that's how I like it. The magic looks and acts perfectly devastating. Basically like one of those wizards from World of Darkness. And there are tons of spells to learn. Looking at the art style, I find it hard to describe. Hmm. Everything is surreal fantasy, but twisted in dark ways with a bit of humor. I okay. don't know enough about art for this. So I think it looks like a cross between H.R. Giger and a Courage the Cowardly Dog episode. All of the magic and units are aligned to a god in this pantheon. That makes sense, actually. A mix of H.R. Giger and Courage the Cowardly Dog. That's uh, not something I thought I would ever hear, but hey. Which, again, I'll come back to. But to pick one out, there's Persephone, the goddess of life and good and justice. So she has nature units like an Ent, or a oh. abomination begging for death. My life is yours. Oh. The troll. Don't be afraid of the troll. This is a force for good. Ugh. He's shooting li yeah, rainbows. Yeah, face of life and justice. Every god's units are like this, and no matter what generic fantasy name it has, you'll have no clue what to expect. Oh. For example, a yeti. You know what a yeti is. Probably. A fairy moth-like creature appears for a little over three What the seconds. hell? Well, in Sacrifice, this Tickle Me Necromorph is a yeti. Oh. No matter which god you worship, its servants are a legion of nightmares. Which I do appreciate. The villains don't outstyle the forces of good. Everyone is equally unwell. Oh. Everything is so rich in color and style. <laughs> Many years have passed, and it still remains incredibly unique. There's okay. so much variety, and I kept wanting to see more of what was out there. As you might expect, there is a soundscape to complement this. The actual battle and interface effects are stock, but mm. not always what you'd expect. Your creatures are under attack. But the environmental oh. effects. Like Wait, there storm, is many. There is machine guns going off for some reason. What the hell? And wind are surprisingly crisp. They're not amazing or anything, but they make the lull before the fighting that much more tense. However, the music can be just as varied as its visuals. The soundtrack ranges from powerful orchestra scores to what I can only call Godzilla music. Okay. Oh my god, that is Godzilla music. He's just watching... This is quite literally just him walking through Tokyo sounds or going in the sea. He just has Godzilla walking past the screen. I love Godzilla. You are group four. Guard me. <laughs> this is horror kaiju music, pretty much. What do you think, Chrono? Or Fable? Uh it's pretty kaiju ish, yeah. Yeah. Oh no! The giant fable is unleashed on Tokyo! Once again, it's unique stuff. I do wish there was more of it since you'll be What's hearing your favorite, the same thing a lot, uh, but era of Godzilla? Really good. Not the Heisei, but more of the one where he got a bit more serious. No Heisei is very silly. Of course, the voice acting especially deserves a mention. The cast for the campaign is huge, and all the voice work is excellent, and oh. it's paired up with compelling dialogue. Like, Sacrifice has loading screens I found more interesting than cutscenes in some other games. Oh. No pursuit was too perilous. No sacrifice too great. Until, well, under the many heavens and in the many worlds, there are darker things than men may dream of. I wasn't oh. prepared for that with promotional images like this. <laughs> I am Charno, God of strife. God of slaughter. God of death where there is pain i am there where there is suffering i uh, flourish where there is joy yes well one could hardly have joy without another's suffering no i don't think i like him it feels worth it to play through the missions on just the hear... man the suit story thing the what more of what the gods have to say, and to see them bicker with each other. It adds mm -hmm. a lot of replayability to the campaign as well, since you'll see the gods interact with each other in new ways. Okay. As for the units, I'm not kidding when I say I think the lines might have been assigned at random. They are... so bizarre. Oh. I move I move aha! <laughs> la 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 la! What the hell? I live. I'm the fastest. What the hell? Executing orders. <laughs> Some voices are hell? fitting and others are flat out a joke. The more I played and the more insane designs I saw, the more I realized that that was a very good call. Each mm. unit has layers of unexpected chaos. So presentation-wise, I've never played anything quite like it. It should come uh. as no surprise that the gameplay itself is also incredibly interesting. 
As far as a strategy game goes, you don't have too many resources to manage. To start with the playable wizard, you have your health and your mana, along with a pile of souls. Your life bar is straightforward, you can heal yourself up with spells, and there's not much to talk about. Mana is where things become more complicated. Okay. It's used to cast spells and summon creatures, and it regens on its own, kind of. There's a magic supply chain. Ah. Uh, have fountains of Grade A Columbian magic. The Grade A Columbian one, magic. On top of it. This mm. gives you a steady stream of the JK rolling juice and denies it to your enemy. <laughs> but the magic must then be transferred to you through creatures called mana whores. The first type of creature we will need is a mana whore. The more of these little pots of greed you have near you, the faster okay. your mana regens. They're weak and completely defenseless, so if they die out in a fight, you don't have any more magic coming in. So having lots of magic homes and a magic harem keeps your big <laughs> bar beefy. However, the little guys aren't free and each costs a single soul. Souls uh. are your money and there's no way to infinitely tap into them. When your own troops die, they leave blue souls behind that you can pick up. It's as simple as just running over them. Red enemy souls are a different problem, as they must first be cleansed of sin. To do uh. this, you summon a special sack doctor onto the enemy soul. They come out of a portal, run up with their big syringe, and then begin the soul extraction process. When mm. it's extracted, they'll be carried off to your altar, which is basically your headquarters. From here, the souls are properly purified and then can be welcomed as part of the Chosen. This is okay. a battle of attrition. There are only so many souls in a fight. You have enemy forces and some neutral villagers. The more powerful units cost more souls to summon, but it uh, a new liability. Your hard spirits thing? could get yoinked from you. So when you get in a fight, you're also trying to collect the enemy's dead and preserve your own. You could escort your sack doctors all the way back to your altar, but that mm. can be a long way. There is an option that instead of building a manolith, you can build a shrine. Now you uh. have a forward operating base for the holy rituals. You can also make an enemy soul good if you just kill them hard enough. Nothing oh. makes you repent like being atomized. <laughs> the system keeps the game very action oriented. You're never worrying about workers or really your economy in general. Fighting, mm -hmm. killing, and gathering resources are all basically the same thing. If you die or kill an enemy wizard, you will respawn after a while, but you'll lose mm. all the souls you were carrying. Damn. As the game goes on and more yeah. corpses are controlled, someone will get the upper This is actually a really interesting RTS, because you're on the ground. I wish more RTSs were like that, where you're quite literally on the ground fighting like this. But, uh, that's just my personal view on the thing. Damn. It does a good job of keeping yeah. things simple, since the Shrine and Manolith are the only Like where you can switch play. from tactical mode turret to turret combat turret, mode. You can leash a creature to one. You can fortify a point or go on a rescue offensive against one, but again... If anyone knows any more games the like this, then free to tell me. I love RTSs, even though I suck at them. Map, you can issue commands on and a teleport spell to your structures, you'll be fine. To wipe the enemy out completely, you'll need to go to their altar, sacrifice a unit, and then kill their wizard. Okay. If the ritual's not interrupted and the caster dies, it's game over. Their altar then begins to gmod collision glitch into the sky, and you win. <laughs> With that done, that brings us to the combat focus. How do you okay. control a game like this? It is awkward at first, but once you learn your way around it, it is really intuitive. There's even a hotkey to assign a hotkey to whatever your mouse is over. Oh. It makes it easy to change things around on the fly. The keyboard is mainly used for grouping units and using abilities, like any other RTS game. But you still have your cursor to interact with icons and units on the screen directly. For unit formations, you can hold right-click and expand out into different menus and icons. This is known as the Mouse Gesture Control System. It oh. was highly praised as revolutionary and innovative when Black and White 1 did it a year later. Oh. Oh. years. I've had this song stuck in my head for 20 years. So. Well then. Do you know anything about the game Black and White? Because I don't, Fable. Uh, not really. You like the notion that we're quite It makes controlling videos. everything no problem. At least when you're I know I'm a little out of it because I'm singing starts, like this. Get chaotic. You want to manage your units to make sure they're in position to fight weaker counterparts, but you're also managing yourself and your own spells, and you're casting support stuff on your people and on yourself because you don't want to die. And all the while you're keeping an eye out for souls and the enemy wizard, and there's a lot going on in every battle. Your troops are smart enough to where they'll move mm -hmm. and hunt down targets on their own, but they'll always be more effective with you controlling them. There's a lot to manage at once, and sometimes magic or monsters will take a higher priority. But there are players out there that are insanely good at microing this game, and I'd like to see those matches. Yeah, sure, I you would have too. Spells, but some of your units do too. Some people are just really good at microing that kind of thing. What abilities and monsters you have can be picked out through a spellbook. Having nine levels of power with five choices each, there's a lot of room to experiment. While the mm. units are broken down into three main types, melee, ranged, and flying, each god gives them their own little quirks. Like Charnel's undead healing by attacking, or any other little ability a unit might have. Oh. Yet, again, it's never too overwhelming. Sacrifice's gameplay kind of sounds like it should be a mess, but it's really confident and fun. They gave it mm. just the right amount of mechanical depth. It's a properly fleshed out strategy and action game. Not too simple, but also not so overwhelming that only StarCraft experts could play it. Sadly, right. the multiplayer is pretty dead, though there are skirmish maps, so we can move on to the campaign. Okay. Persephone. What good is a holy warrior without a holy war? Oh my god. 
How like you, Charnel. Myself, I would sooner suspect Charnel. You do have a certain taste for destruction, don't you? This is a story that you don't need to pop open the manual for, but it does give some additional context. Okay. The short version is, while the planet was intact and not floating islands, there was a single god. A demon tore open a portal to hell, and then God lost that war. Hell has oh. won, and the new pantheon of gods sort of just appeared. It does explain why the creatures look like melted gorgonites. Ew. Hell is a base template for life here. It's a 10 mission campaign, but each god has 9 unique missions. So you can replay for 45 unique missions, and then the final battle. You choose which of the gods you want to serve. There's Persephone again. Then you have James, the god of Earth, who's a mm -hmm. giant worm. It's some oh. kind of in-joke or nod to the developer's Earthworm Jim series. Probably. Honestly, I don't understand why else you'd make him a worm. I am James, god of Earth. You know, rocks and soil and stuff. Some nice gems, too. Oh, it's not all brown and gray, you know. Just mostly. Then you have Stratus. Oh, that god. does sound like the guy from I Love Ray Everyone Loves Raymond. Out of the air in the heavens. Tim Curry went from blowing up spooky balloons to being one. Oh. Oh, let's do be honest, shall we? In any halfway civilized world, I would be the only god. Well, how do you feel like... How do you feel about God Tim Curry, Fable? Oh no, Fable's dead again. Why are you all die so fast? <laughs> it seems the pantheon of gods... Fable's like, evil Tim Curry... Uh, Tim Curry, uh... Betrayed me, and I have nothing to say about this. <laughs> Probably. Go. Persephone and He's James no care god about to me. Earth, Stratos is between good and evil. He goes oh. where the wind takes him and seems to not care about the brewing. Why don't you get it, Matt Crono understands. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> also, I was talking, but my microphone was muted because there's a loud car outside. I'm embarrassed. Oh god. <laughs> well then. You, so I didn't really say anything. I, well, I basically answered your question, but you didn't hear me, so I had to re-answer the question. <laughs> okay, what is it your answer to the question? That uh, that I don't know, and Chrono gets it. Why don't you understand that? Why? <sighs> Well, yeah, for Tim Curry's only appearance in a weird hybrid RTS game. Okay. Oh, you think she? Oh yeah, he was in Brutal. The Grand Demon. Brutal Legend. And which, the White Winged Death. <laughs> Pyro is the god of fire. The forces mm. of good have also declared him the god of chaos and pollution and gas and waste, but he claims to be an avatar of industry and knowledge. Mm. I intend to build factories in the Davon Forest. Which is a haven for antiquated druidic thinking. Oh. All who do not flee will be enriched by my triumph. You, not least of all. Oh no, you don't need to convince me. I'm down to enrich some druids. Finally, <laughs> you have Charnel, who is comically evil. It is time I reopened the demon gate of Golgotha. Oh, wonderful. Okay, but he does give reasons why he's not the big villain and doesn't want to destroy the world. Let me assure you, I do not want to destroy the world. That's where all the best slaughter takes place, you know. Oh can't my really god. Argue with that. As for I can. Eldred, he's responsible for destroying his own home. He oh. was a powerful man there and summoned a demon to destroy his enemies. Of course, it went wildly out of control and destroyed everything. Yeah, Magic sounds might about be right. partly derived from gods, I'm not entirely sure how it works. I don't know much about spells or witchcraft in the real world either. My latest yeah. insight on that front comes from a local bookstore. Wait, what? They moved their witchcraft and spirituality section closer to the counter because it was by far the most shoplifted section of the store. What? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you... Okay. I they can't conjure dead presidents yet. What? What's cool about the campaign is that there are choices to make here and there. These can slightly alter your goals, your dialogue, and some buffs you get. Naturally, you sometimes have additional side objectives as well. This is neat mm. agency stuff on its own, but you also have a choice in what missions you want to do. Doing a job for them will give you some of their spells and units. You could go full mono god or pursue a mix of favors. Okay. If you anger one too much, they might not offer you a mission anymore. Ah. Unless you help out an ally or a story event happens. There's good banter in between the missions, and it's always fun to see the gods spat with each other. Why should they continue to suffer for the comfort of savage and brutish beings like the trolls? I see only one savage and brutish being here. Well. Come now, you mustn't forget me. 
Everyone wait. Mm. Haven't we all had enough of wars? No. Oh. <laughs> the final mission is always the same, but what I like is that the game picks your motivation based mm. on your mission choices. Were you helping a benevolent patron trying to find redemption, or were you helping a demon lord burn stuff down because you've accepted your place? Interesting. The very end has a final choice as well where you can react to the narrative you got. With such variety, the campaign's difficulties are all over the place, but it's a fun ride and you can try different paths to learn more about the world. Cool. I didn't find the deeper parts of the lore to be too captivating, but it was an interesting puzzle to put together. The dialogue writing is excellent and really does elevate its setting. The campaign has a good variety of different maps and objectives, but again, your mileage may vary depending on what you pick. Sacrifice also has the funniest, maybe most direct escort mission line in a video game. Okay. Go to my altar, or I will kill you all. <laughs> I love her. Just tell him, yeah. That's worth a mention. This is an incredibly unique game. It has elements of all kinds of games that would come later. There are multiplayer modes that have like the primordial soup of MOBAs in it. Sacrifice is like a game from a different timeline. It had an expansion planned, but just sold too poorly. I keep imagining what if this game blew up, what would have come after? The issue is that while the mechanics and ideas were well thought out, it seems like the game itself isn't quite there. They were pushing the technology and it does show. You'll see mm. the animations freak out from time to time. How you oh. look through the map feels like breaking it sometimes. It's yeah. clear that systems like AI weren't all there, and there are interface improvements that could be made. But these are mainly consequences of it just being an old game that was very ambitious. You do I mean, have to do some sense. work for the best experience, but I do recommend this game. This is one of those titles that I would love to see get the HD remaster treatment. If it had proper polish and better AI, the fights could be less chaotic. Even just having multiplayer back would be nice. I would love to see how people now play Sacrifice. That's all for now. Until next time. All of your memoirs oh. have been slaughtered. Well then. Until the next bit. Sorry this one was later, recording it was a bit of an ordeal. Would you consider updating an old review if things changed? It would be more hmm. likely if there was an HD edition or an expansion or something like that. Okay. Only Odyssey is a good candidate, EVE Online I really don't want to go back to. Do you think Kislev is flanderized in Warhammer 3? Uh, yeah, it does kind of look that way. Like, the whole appeal of the bears was that the bears would be unique, but they're giving everybody a bear. Oh. I'll have more to say on that series in another well, video. Well, damn. Have you checked out Cruelty Squad? Yes. Cruelty Squad is the logical conclusion of video games. What? Command and Conquer 4 or Thief 4. I'll have to look up what Cruelty Squad is later. I don't know if that means what I'd rather play or do a video on, but the answer for both is Thief 4. I mean, if I did, a Thief 4 video would be a longer one, because there is a lot to say on don't it. Don't do it, so. Mac. It's a trap. Uh, Tim Curry is in. The bad decisions you don't know if he's in it. It's a trap! ...are at least kind of interesting it's a trap. and how you could look at it and how games were going back then. With Command & Conquer 4, it's just... I... Who... Yeah, so... Check out these people. I'm going to look up Cruelty Squad just to see what that is. Oh, it's a very weird looking game. Okay. Well then. Thank you all so much for coming by. If you like what I'm doing here, please do consider following. Consider helping if you want. Consider sending this video over to friends. I don't know. I'm not feeling the best right now. So, thank you all so much. I'll see you guys later.